Hey there, Tundra Nation! We've run into a few fans that are very interested in getting into the shooting sports, and they seem to have accidentally turned to us for guidance. Are you stupid or something? While we admit we are terrible role models and you should generally disregard our opinions, we do feel obligated to help. This video is part one of a two-part series and will be covering mostly rifle-related topics here. So stick around as long as you can stomach what is essentially the garbage rod equivalent of gun tubers, letting you know ways you can get into shooting as a beginner on a budget. Before we get into us giving you some advice you never asked for, it seems that the Ken and Karen threat paid off last week, and I'm happy to say that our favorite mansion-loving mercs were not sent out to hunt any of you down. That being said, you should still totally hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Gotta feed the family somehow, am I right? Alright, on to the good stuff. This first method will definitely get a rifle into your hands and maybe even something with a little more horsepower for absolutely no monetary cost to yourself. Sounds good, right? Well, this method should not be taken lightly as it's essentially the equivalent of purchasing a Boeing 747 so you can get unlimited free peanuts. Joining the military will get you a decent amount of trigger time behind some serviceable guns with decent optics and accessories. You will, however, be required to do a lot of other things that we don't necessarily condone you do on a regular basis, such as waking up early, exercising regularly, showing up on time to work, doing what you're told, and sitting through safety briefs on why going halvesies on a cockfighting arena with some crazy slobs is frowned upon and may have legal ramifications. Plus, there's always the possibility of going to war, which could be a major inconvenience when you're trying to level up on Fortnite. Is that what you do on Fortnite? Honestly, I, I, I don't know. It just seems like something you would do on Fortnite. Now for some more realistic methods. At this point, we're going to assume that you're looking into getting your first AR pattern rifle or maybe some other sporting style long gun. If you grew up around guns, you probably have access to some at your parents' house, and maybe you were even gifted some guns as a kid. It can be really tough to consider parting with gifted guns due to sentimental reasons, but if you can bring yourself to do it, you technically have more money in the bank for that tactical style sporting rifle. Guns usually hold their resale value very well and that Savage Access or old Remington 700 that you have could go a long ways into making a dent in the cost to get into an AR-15. Some people may be even willing to trade with you straight up, or you can sell your gun to a gun shop and pay the difference. One thing to think about is that if you hunt, what caliber are you going to get your AR chambered in? The most common and effective calibers will be 5.56 or 223, but if you're willing to spend a little bit more money then you can get other calibers as well. Since you're broke, we're going to go ahead and assume that you're looking for a chambering in 223, 5.56 or 223 wild. Depending on the game that you hunt, these may or may not be acceptable chamberings for you. Most places, to the best of our knowledge, will allow 223 for deer hunting, which is probably on the smaller side of acceptable, but choosing the right bullet weight for the application might make it more appropriate. What we're trying to say is that trading away your hunting rifle has the possibility of digging into your ability to hunt, so just consider that. Now with all that being said, we recommend that you start with a 223 or 556 for your first AR rifle caliber. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Eugene Stoner and you're a little confused about the 223, 556, and 223 wild differences, fear not. It's not as confusing as it might seem. If your rifle is chambered in any of the above calibers, they all shoot the same projectiles, but there are minor differences in the casings, and we're talking very minor. Between the 5.56 and 2.23 cartridge, that change is mostly related to the pressure created in the chamber. We aren't going to get all technical here, but if you want some more information, check out a link that'll annotate on the screen to somebody who goes more in depth on the subject. Unless I forget to do that in the edit. Short version. If your rifle's chambered in 223, only shoot ammo that says 223 on the box. If it's chambered in 556 or 223 wild, you can shoot either 223 or 556 ammunition safely. 
The reason we recommend one of these chamberings is because they're extremely versatile and relatively inexpensive to shoot. You'll have to come to the realization that shooting, it's gonna cost you money every time you pull the trigger, and it's basically like throwing a quarter and then some down the range. If you decide to go with calibers like 300 Blackout, 6.5 Creedmoor, 223 Valkyrie, 5.56 Grendel, or something more exotic, you're looking at a minimum of double that cost and potentially four to five dollars per trigger pull on the really high-end expensive stuff. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Most calibers have great applications, but ammo in 223 and 556 is the least expensive and the most flexible that you can find in an AR pattern rifle. Most calibers have great applications, but ammo in 223 and 556 is the least expensive and most flexible you can find in an AR pattern rifle, so it's probably the best place to start. Build or buy. This is another tough decision for a lot of new shooters. Buying a budget AR is definitely a good way to get you started because you'll have something that is guaranteed to work and if it doesn't, hey, you've got a warranty on it. At the time of filming this, you can find budget ARs for as low as $400 on sale and between $500 and $700 normally. This can be a great option as it'll allow you to get into a gun and modify it as you save more money, then learn what kind of accessories and components you find most important to add or upgrade. This will probably be the more expensive option in the long run if you consider that you'll essentially be buying things like handguards, stocks, sights, etc. A minimum of two times as you upgrade the rifle and then you're going to have a box of old stock parts that you're probably never going to use again. The alternative is building, and that can be nice, especially if you don't have a trade or a wad of cash to throw at a rifle all at once. Buying a part at a time for a rifle is awesome because it stings less when you're spending 50 bucks at a time on parts as opposed to spending $500 all at once. And you get to put the parts that you want on the rifle the first time. This will usually take a little bit longer and you won't have a warranty on the overall gun. It's not honestly as hard to build an AR as many people think, but there are certainly cons to consider too. If you plan on shooting any sort of matches or going to tactical courses, it will almost be mandatory to have an optic to complement the iron sights on your rifle. You probably could get by without an optic, but trust me on this, you're gonna want one. Red dots are probably the best way to go here as they're the most budget friendly and you can move them to other rifles pretty easily if you decide to swap them for a scope later on down the line. Plus, they're pretty darn easy to sell in the future if you want to get some of your money back. Choosing a red dot can be tough because there are a lot of budget friendly options out there. Just be careful when you get into the red dots because getting suckered into buying a $20 toy that doesn't work is kind of a bummer. It's usually recommended that you start looking at red dots in the $150 to $200 and up point for any serious use. But I'd say that if you don't have that kind of money lying around, then consider either the Bushnell TRS-25 or the SIG Romeo MSR and use it till you can afford the upgrade. These optics have been a proven great starting point for a lot of shooters and will not break under normal conditions. Anybody who disagrees with that statement is either an elitist and is wrong, or just plain wrong. If you feel the need for magnification, consider spending at least $150, and I'd look at low power variable zoom optics from brands like Vortex, Primary Arms, and possibly Bushnell again, as they'll allow you to at least use your AR like an AR without breaking right off the bat. Just make sure you avoid those cheap Chinesium ACOG clones and do some research before you buy because buying a cheap scope without a good warranty two or three times will probably be more expensive than what I just recommended. Now we come to handguards, rails, lasers, vertical grips, and other accessories. I'd say that if you're building, find a decent M-Lock rail to start with. If you're buying, then just use whatever handguard your rifle comes with until you decide to upgrade later. All of this stuff that you can put on your handguard is absolutely unnecessary for what you are probably going to be using your rifle for. Add these things as your budget allows and don't let anybody tell you that you need any of them unless you're talking about a very specific application. You might be surprised at how little the military actually uses the lasers it spends all that money on. Yeah, they're great tools when you need them, but you don't need them as often as you might think by watching too many videos on YouTube. 
So that about wraps it up for this week, folks. If you dislike this video, then you probably put an end mill through the side of your first 80% lower. But if you like the video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon page to stay up to date on current and future content. And if you feel like repping some Tundra swag, follow the link in the description below to our store on Teespring. Thanks for watching, Tundra Nation, and you can now find us on Instagram at TundraTacticalMN.